In this video, we are going to be looking at how to deploy a Spring Boot application to AWS. So a couple of weeks back, I completed the video tutorial on how to create a new Spring Boot project. And at the end of the day, we deployed that application to render. Now in this video, we are going to be deploying that Book API application to AWS. Now, if you just want to see the part where we start the deployment phase, you already have an application you want to deploy on the platform. They are provided timestamp for you, so you just have to click on the particular part you want to see. So you have to skip all of this part. Now, for the previous viewer that want to deploy that same application, there are a couple of changes I've made to the code base. So you don't just go ahead and deploy the application, you have to follow the steps that followed. Now, inside of my code editor, you discover that I have a new branch that is titled testing aws deployment so what i pretty much did was um created a new branch and made changes to the new branch that i will be showing you right now so starting with the pom.xml file you know we had the h2 um, dependency for the h2 database on the scope of test and we also have the postgres sql db dependency for our runtime scope okay now what I did was pretty much commented at the scope test from our H2 database. So our application is configured to make use of this H2 in memory database. And then the Postgres SQL was removed. So I left all of these instead of deleting them just to give you an illustration of the changes I've made. And um, finally, inside of our application or properties file, I've also configured the data source to make use of the H2 driver as well as the URL to the in-memory database that will be configured for us by Spring. Now, um, I went ahead to create a JAR file for this project and that JAR file is located inside of the target directory. So that is basically the changes I made. Now to create a JAR file, you just simply use the MVM clean package command to do that, okay? Uh, back to or perhaps to start the deployment process of this particular application, I'll open up my browser and I want to search for AWS. So that should be AWS. I'll just practically visit any endpoints I visited previously. And I want to sign into the console. Okay. Now, if you, have, if you don't have an AWS account, please do go ahead and create one so you'll be able to follow alongside the tutorial. So it's just a simple process that you just have to include your um, credit card at the end of the day. So you'll be able to make use of the AWS service. Now, if you don't have an AWS account and you are visiting for the first time, you won't be prompted with any of this because these are services I've made use of. So it's been listed amongst my recently visited services. So the first service we want to create or want to make use of is the I am service. So we search for it using that search bar. So we we'll use I am. And right here, we'll open the I am service. And um, it's taking some time. And we want to create a new row. So I'll scroll down a bit so you get to see everything clear. So we click on the rows. I already have 13 rows. And to create a new row, you use the create button at the top. So we we'll leave this one as is for our particular application. And um, the service we want is the EC2 service. Okay, we we'll click on the EC2. We we'll leave this one as is as well, and then we click on next. So there are a couple of configuration that we have to include, or permission policies that we have to include. So one of them is the elastic. Oops, elastic being stuck um web service okay so i'll look for worker service as well and um, elastic being stuck multiple docker container and finally i think uh, we have 
okay we don't have it like that so it should be code pipeline let me see so i'll just expand this aws code pipeline full access so that is the final one that we need now the reason i'm including this is because i'll be showing you as well how to create a ci cd pipeline using aws in another video and i want to make use of this same role okay as um for as the ec2 instance that will be created when i create that pipeline in the coming day so i'll click on next to create my role and i'll have to give this role a name so i'll simply say io code book api ec2 role you can give it any name of your choice but that is what i am giving it and um i think it's okay so i'll have to create the role now so it's creating the role so back to the service again what i want to search for is elastic beanstalk okay so you just elastic beanstalk and this is the service we want to make use of to create our spring boot project so right here we click on create environment so we want to leave it as web server environment and we want to give our application a name so this should be io code book api and you see an environment name is automatically generated for our project and yes the, it should be managed platform and yeah we want to create want to choose a platform and this platform should be java take note of that and we'll leave this platform version as the recommended value that has been presented for us so the next thing for us to do now is just click on next and yeah a role will be generated for us if we don't already have a role and right here i have to click down to use the new role i created which is the io code book api ec2 role so you should as well make use of the role you'll be creating so you just click on this one and then you click on next And finally, we just skip to review. So the rest configurations will take the default values. And with this other configuration that we've provided, we are good to deploy our application onto the platform. So we have to include something. And um, I'll move to, to the top, click on edit. And right here, I'll scroll down and I want to add an environment property. So by default, if I'm to deploy my application, the port that the application listings at is port 5000 from in engines. Okay, so I want to change that port to a defined port for the application, which is 8080. So we should do port in all caps on the tab and we want to change the value to 8080. And then we simply just you see we simply just click on next okay so with all of this we've properly configured the environment that will be deploying our application to so i'll just submit and it's going to take a while to create this environment so why the why the creation of the environment is going on behind the scene i'll pause the video and when the environment has been created successfully we are going to be deploying our application onto the new created environment so our environment has been launched successfully and you'll be presented with a message at the top and i have already um, removed the message so you go ahead now and to upload and deploy your jar file so we practically want to choose the file from our file list and yeah this is the page you just have to navigate to wherever you have the jar file and you click on the jar file in particular and then you click on open and there's um a, a test here that says file must be less than 500 mb so that is the max size that you can upload okay 
Now the next thing for you to do is just simply deploy your jar file. So yeah, the upload of the jar file took a couple of seconds because it's saving to an instance of an S3 bucket that was initially created. And as you can see, we also have Elastic Beanstalk is updating the environment because we've automatically, sorry, because we've deployed the jar file to the environment. So when this um, updating is done, we can click on the link, which is this domain that we have here to see our application. So now the environment has been updated successfully. So this is the domain that it exposed. So I'll click on it and it's going to redirect me in a new tab. And we can see that access to this particular endpoint has been denied. This is due to the fact that you already know that that application with defined restriction on which endpoint can be accessed. So I'll just copy the whole of this part as the whole of this URL, Control C, and I'll go to Postman. And I already have it here, so I'll just simply paste it. That's for another application I was testing. And what I want to do now is just slash out, which is sorry, not slash out, but slash register, which is the endpoint to register a new user for the application. And these are the details that I'll be using to register this particular user. And then I'll click on send. Hopefully, we are going to get a 200 OK. And you, as you can see, we have a 200 OK. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead to authenticate this user in particular. So I'll copy the object that we'll use for authentication, which is simply the email and the password. And back to my auth user call, um, I'll just paste it here, Control V, and then I'll send in this request. Okay, there's an error. I had a comma at the end which is not supposed so i'll send again and another error because this is not the correct url to use so back to register user url i'm going to copy the whole of this Control c back to auth user i'll paste it right here and instead of register i want to go to the authenticate endpoint which is auth for short and then i'll send so all of this um, logic you are seeing here is for those of you that have practically seen the first one, that have seen the first tutorial. So if you just want the deployment, you already know the logic you implemented in your application. So you can just deploy your application and test it on your own part. So I'm going to copy the whole of this string, Control C, and um, back to the get books endpoint. I'll move from no auth to bearer token what we previously did with render then i'll paste this new token here and back to my auth user and to copy the all of this control c and to my get books i'll paste it here as well then we'll have slash api slash v1 farm correct i'll have to confirm that so right here and um, back to application and properties file so we have v1 slash api instead so you should come before this so I'll practically take this part um just cut it out and um, paste it right here i think typing would have been much more faster but being a lazy programmer sometimes <laughs> I know you get it so i'll send this request okay we have a four three for bidding and i don't really know how that came about so i guess probably I, I missed something so i have to include an e at the end or at this point before the wire i'm sure that is practically what i missed and then i'll send again and hopefully this time around we should get okay we got a 200 okay as our response so with this you take your um json token then you can call any endpoint of your application that you've hosted on the aws platform so back to the aws cloud hosting platform i want to show you something that you can take a look at so we have locks so i'll click on locks these are locks that you already you've already seen i was pretty much generated 
in the application itself okay part of the logs from the application and part of the logs that the aws environment is going to um, present to you so what we want to do now is to request for logs so we want to request the last 100 lines which is practically called the tail in some instances and we want to download the log and downloading this log is going to create open up a new tab for us and we get to see everything that we've done so far inside of the log so i'm interested in the last part where we carry that some um, updates logic so this one is from Index, so I want the one from our application itself. So we have here we have select user and the details of user from our database, and I think we also have we should have where we okay, we don't pretty much have that, but in order for us to show that we have to visit the books endpoint. So the Ibanit query of books is what I pretty much want you all to see. So I just do slash books and then i'll send so we have an embedded list of empty books and uh, i'll move back to my browser and right here i want to request for log again the last hundred lines and let's see the latest this is it so i'll download and i'll scroll back to okay i'll scroll back to the bottom so, let's see let's see okay here we have it select book book the book id the book author the price and so on and so forth so that is for deploying a jar file is bring java jar file to aws so what we will be seeing later is how to deploy using ci cd procedures something similar to what we have in render okay so that's just basically it so that brings us to the end of this particular deployment video thanks for watching and please if you are here to subscribe to this channel i know you do love my content please do subscribe to this channel give the video a thumbs up and ping that bell icon so that whenever I upload the next video, you get notified. Peace out. And until the next one, keep being your best self.